name is Andreas Lambrecht, and I'm a solution architect at Aqua Security. Today, I would like to show you how easy and simple Aqua Cloud Native Security Platform can be installed on OpenShift environment. As of today, there are multiple ways how you can deploy cloud native application on Kubernetes based environments and platforms. You can use Helm charts where you can predefine all the application related setting in a one single YAML file and deploy this application in a one single Helm command. You can use operator from the operator hub. And this method is getting more and more standard in OpenShift environments because you can simply navigate to the OpenShift UI and deploy an application in one or two clicks. You can also use Aqua CTL command line tool to deploy and configure Aqua without friction in a one single command. All sounds good and great. However, today I would like to install Aqua on OpenShift environment in Kubernetes old school style using simple YAML files. By this, you will get an overview and clear understanding of the Aqua's enterprise grade 3T architecture and also how all of those components play together. Curious to see it in action? Let's do it. All right, let's see what we have here. Here's my dashboard of OpenShift 42 environment running on AWS. We see this cluster is up and running and it's also healthy. We can scroll down to the compute UI and check how many nodes we have. We have a cluster with one single master and two worker nodes. Fully sufficient for this proof of concept. Let's start with the deployment process. For this, I will need to move to the documentation page where I can find a lot of great information about Aqua Cloud Native Security Platform. Things like what is Aqua CSP in general? What are the main features here? But as you can see here, we'll have deployment overview. Let's click here and here you will get the full list of platforms where you can deploy Aqua. It can be Kubernetes, can be Docker Swarm, can be EGS. So in my case, I will choose OpenShift. Here we go. All right, what we need to do first. First step is prepare the environment, right? What we need to do is we need to create a project. We need to create a service account. Give this guy the right permission so we can deploy all the components on this platform. Then we need to create the circuit, which will be used to connect to the Aqua registry. As you can see here, Aqua registry. In an airgap environment, it can be your own registry, or if you move in the production and deploy Aqua in the production, you can simply pull those images and pull it to your own registry and use those images from there. You also need to provide username and password. And this is something that you will get from the sales team for the proof of concept, but also if you are happy Aqua customer. Then we will need to link this secret to our service account and finally create secret for the database. Simple, nothing special, straightforward. Step two, deployment of Aqua CSP components. Before this, we need to download some YAML files from Aqua Security GitHub repo. Here are some links. So you can actually simply pull them down to your laptop or to your jump host. There's one important thing that I once would like to highlight is the capability to run the Aqua database, not only as a container-based solution, as you can see here, and this is exactly what I will do in my proof of concept, but you can also run Aqua database on your existing Postgres SQL environment, or if you're running in a cloud, you can also use managed database services like RDS from AWS, Azure, or from Google. Additionally, there's some other options that we can configure here. For instance, for the 
communication between gateway and the server, we can use different authentication methods. By default, we are generating some token, but you can also use, for instance, some certificates. You can also use certificates to communicate to the Aqua server via SSL, as you can see here. But again, for now, we will skip this and simply move to the deployment steps. And this is outlined here. So now, since we have all of the information that we need, we can move over to the command line and start a deployment. Here's my deployment host. So let's navigate to the Aqua project. As I already mentioned, we predefined some of the settings here. So let's get the service account, as you can see here, that's Aqua SA. Let's check secrets. The secrets, as you can see here, this is the secret for the database and also secret for the registry. And I also pulled all of the YAML files that we need for the deployment. So first step, we need to create the roles and the role bindings. Just let's take a look how that looks like and what is exactly there. As you can see, we will create a role, call it output discovery and assign or bind, create a role binding and assign this to our Aqua SA user. What is this role exactly for? I mean, this role will give us the capability to discover nodes, services, endpoints, bots, deployment namespaces, and also give us the capability to get list the image streams and also image streams layered. This is important if you will integrate with the OpenShift container registry. All right. So let's simply apply them. Pending. So, Here we go. Applied. All right. As so a next step, we need to deploy Aqua database container. Again, Aqua is a three-tier architecture, and database is the first part of it, right? So let's see what exactly will be deployed. We can see that it's a simple deployment. We'll create deployment AquaDB. We'll use this image. We'll use also the secret here, the Postgre password, and also expose the service on port 4532. All right, so let's simply do this. Create minus F. Deployment. DB servers. All right. It's created. Very good. The next piece in the whole architecture is the console or the server. Right, so for this, we have a three YAML files. And those three YAML files, one of them is the deployment, the second one is the server, and the third one is the route that we will create to connect to this server or UI. So let's move ahead and check what we, ha what we have here. This is the deployment. This section is really important, right? So. As for the proof of concept, we will run this container privileged. However, there's also an option to use, let's say, the security context and run this container unprivileged. Right? We will find the information regarding the database, so how to connect to the database. This is the user. This is the secret that we have created. We also have two databases. One is actually for the configuration, as you can see here. This is the DB host. And the second one, it's for the audit, right? Then let's scroll down a little bit. We'll also create, create a service for the web, Aqua web UI, and expose this on our 443 and also on 8080. And for sure, create a route which will point to the port 88. I think for the proof of concept, it's fully sufficient. So let's go and deploy those components. Okay, and last but not least, there's a third component, which is called Gateway. 
Gateway is responsible for the communication between the management plane, which represent which will be represented by the database and also the UI or Aqua Web, and also the enforcers. Right. So the Gateway streamlines streamlines the communication between those components. I mean, there are multiple reasons because you don't want, let's say, every enforcer or every worker node to talk directly to the database, and for sure, it's like for the scalability reasons as well. Right. Which is really important if you need to, let's say, implement some additional cluster, you don't have to replicate all the management components like database and also the uh, web UI, or Aqua Web, right? We will simply install new gateway to the new cluster and point the enforcers from that new cluster to this gateway. So the gateway will take all that responsibilities and also that will establish the communication to the management plane. So now let's take a look how to deploy the gateway. Right. Here we have the informations of the deployment. I mean, it's something similar to like we do on a web, Aqua web server side. And this is the gateway here. You can also specify if you want to run this as a non-privileged account. I guess like for the proof of concept, we will keep it as it is. You will need to provide information for the Aqua console. You also need to provide the information for the Postgres. As you can see, here's the user, here's the password, and here are the information to the Scalic database and also the Scalic audit. Right? Additionally, we will expose the service on port 8443 and also on port 3622. I mean, for the communication between the enforcer and the gateway, we're typically using JRPC, but if that's not possible for any reason, you can also do a fallback to port 3622. So now let's deploy this as well. Let's create it and finally see how far it goes. Continuous creating, we see that web is already running, database is also already running. And let's give a couple of seconds. All right, we're good to go. Now let's move over to the OpenShift UI and connect to the Aqua console. Here we have the networking section, and if I will click on routes and select the Aqua project, I will find this link. The first what I need to do is I will need to provide my username and password. Define password, and also we will need to provide the license. Again, you will get this license either from the sales team for the proof of concept or for production use. I will need to accept it, and as you can see, we are up and running, and all of the components are functioning. So as a next step, we will need to deploy the Aqua Enforcers. And by this, we need to go to the Enforcers group, create the Enforcer group, give it a name. I would say Open, OpenShift, it's a Linux. We'll need to select the type of the orchestrator. It's OpenShift, Aqua Service Account, project is Aqua. In that case, we're using Cryo. You can also provide a logical name. Here's to the gateway, which we deployed, the installation token. So you can provide this, but if not, we will generate one automatically, the image, and a couple of options that we can enable. Again, I don't want to go through everything. There's additional session which covers this very well. So and I will click Risk Explorer Auto Discovery. So now we have created the group, and here we will get the deployment command. So we can simply curl or just take this daemon set description and use it for the deployment. Now I will use 
the link to the daemon set description and tell OC to deploy the daemon set. So every worker node in my cluster will get Aqua Enforcer deployed. All right, we see the daemon set was created. If I will get boats, I will see that container are creating. So we have two worker nodes in that particular cluster, and we will see that two agents will be created. Now let's run the same command again and see if the deployment was done. All right, we have two agents, two containers are running. Very good. Let's move over to UI and check the enforcers and also check if those are connected, right? We see they're connected. Last heartbeat was one minute ago. And then we can go to the Risk Explorer and see that we have already started the discovery, All right? We see some Aqua namespace, we see some OpenShift monitoring namespace, but we also see one namespace, we just call it Slackshot. And if I will click on those components, I will see that some of the images are already scanned. Right? And this is typically done automatically without doing anything by the enforcers and also the auto discovery functionality. And if you will ask yourself, how is the scanning done typically? Right? If we deploy Aqua, we also to provide or deploy one additional scanner, which will be deployed as part of the platform. And as you can see, this scanner is already scanning all of those images, right? If you want to, you can also add some additional ones. So if you wanna get more performance and scan those images way faster, it's also possible. But I think we're good for now and we're done. Great job. Let us summarize. We deployed Aqua Cloud Native Security Platform on OpenShift environment via YAML files. We deployed Aqua Management Plane, which consists of AquaDB, Aqua Server, and Aqua Gateway. We also deployed Aqua's Control Plane, which is represented by Aqua Enforcers. We automatically discovered all running workloads on the OpenShift environment and scanned used images via Aqua Scanner. So now I'm ready deploying some additional application on my OpenShift environment, integrate with existing OpenShift registry, and also apply some runtime policies, which I will cover in the next session. And for sure, explore the security posture of my environment. My name is Andreas Lambrecht, and it was Deploying Aqua on OpenShift How-To Session. Thank you.